Tom. Hey! <laughs> um. <laughs> Hello everyone and uh, <laughs> welcome to um, my YouTube account. I haven't done any videos yet but this will be the first one. Uh, this is my lesbian lover as you couldn't you couldn't tell from the uh, attire. So today I wanted to talk about some ear conditions as I suffer with quite a few myself. Um, I don't want to go too, in, too into detail too into, de too, <laughs> into too much detail with, um, with most of them but um, I suffer from and I have since a very young age patchless eustachian tubes which uh, if you didn't know is a condition with the eustachian tube which is the tube that connects from your ear to the back of your nose area it um its main function is to you know let air pressures be kind of i can't think of the word it helps with the air pressures in your middle ear basically and um patricity station tubes means the tube is open instead of you know just closing and opening when it needs to kind of thing so what that means is you'll have a lot of air going out into the middle ear so um, try and think of, you know, like Darth Vader, like, like <laughs> no, I'm being serious though, like, it's kind of like that. So you'll have a lot of air in your middle ear and you can kind of feel it sat on your eardrum and people that suffer with uh, patchlessy station tubes, a lot of them find it very difficult to talk to you because they will be hearing their own breathing incredibly loud and it's it's just it's quite difficult to talk you know even your own breathing you can you can feel and hear it like you know think of someone uh, with a microphone right when it's very very close to their mouth and you can kind of you know, hear their breathing don't you do you know what I mean mm -hmm. that kind of a thing um, so I suffer with that I have done since I was young I also suffer from um, tinnitus which I'm sure everyone knows what that is it's, Sorry. it's such a boring <laughs> subject <laughs> Um, which is uh, just you know a regular high pitched noise that we all get it here and there, but people with tinnitus have it permanently. Uh, pulsatile tinnitus, which is basically you hear your heartbeat constantly. Um, uh, some people I think have it semi permanent, so it will come on and off. But it's like constant whooshing um, on the eardrum. Um, there can be many things that cause this. You know, some of them can be quite serious but for the most part it is normally nothing too dangerous causing it but um, if you are suffering from this if you can hear your heartbeat you know whooshing away in your ear or sometimes you know it's not like a whoosh for some people it's more like you can actually hear like you know like the beating like a drum then I really suggest uh, taking any information you can find on the internet about um, pulsatile tinnitus um, printing it and just showing your doctor and seeing if they refer you to a neurologist because you know you just want to get double checked there's nothing serious going on in there um, and what else uh, I hear many other things you know I, ha I have rapid popping on my eardrum I hear like a loud kind of vibration sound constantly um, you know kind of like it's hard to explain kind of like you know if you took a lorry engine revving and placed if, if it could still magically work you know harry <laughs> potter's come in oosh, with his wand and it's working you know on a piece of wood magically that kind of a sound you know how something vibrates mm -hmm. louder when it's on wood that sound <laughs> um, but it's kind of like that all around my skull is more it's a, like a sound and a feeling um so i have that um rapid popping, I have air rushing whenever I move my jaw uh, and many other things but the thing I wanted to talk about primarily today is um, it's called a cholestatoma now <laughs> what that is is um, it's, I'm not 100% knowledgeable because I'm, I've only found out about half a year ago that I have this so please forgive me if any of this information isn't correct but it's just something I'd like to document for myself um, and look back on and to share it if, if, if it helps anyone but what that is is um, it's a disease in the middle ear I think there can be many things that cause this um, but for me I think I have it because of my patchless eustachian tubes um, like I said the thing where you have the air coming out uh, so what I did, because I've had this since young, to fix it was I would 
kind of holding my nose and sniffing um because that would pull everything in and kind of close the tube temporarily but the problem with that is it's retracted my eardrums completely over the years um so what that sorry that's the reason i think i've got the cholestatoma because my eardrums are so pulled in they get right against the back and uh it therefore creates like a, an air pocket and airspace and that's the perfect kind of breeding ground for cholestatoma to live in you know and just breed away dirty little thing but um basically it it's a disease that erodes uh the middle ear it, it, it depends on the um on the individual some people you know if you haven't had it long that's great but over time it erodes more and more of your your inner ear area um it can erode the hearing bones and eventually i do believe unless i've read this wrong that it can end up growing up to the brain area um so it's it's um it kind of behaves like a tumour, although it isn't one. Um, most people that have mastoid surgery uh, to, to fix this um, end up having several surgeries, unfortunately, because um, it takes just one little cell left behind and it can grow back again, you know. It's like a boss in a video game. It just keeps coming back. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I just wanted to, to just... I was meant to be brief, but I rambled. I just wanted to briefly talk about cholestatoma. Um, I found out I had mine six months ago. I'm not sure how long I've actually had the cholestatoma for, but um, so w when you look inside my ear, not to be crude, so you know if you're eating your dinner or your tea, sorry, sorry, loves, press pause, okay? So it basically if you, if you look in my ear you can see all the the keratin it's just like dead skin that's the posh word okay <laughs> it's collecting on my eardrum um which is because of the cholestatoma um so i'm having mastoid surgery and that's in just over a week from a week and a bit it's the fourth of november um and uh, I just wanted to kind of do a mini video on this because I'm going to hopefully be documenting my uh, my mastoid surgery and, and everything to come from that um, and just see what happens because um, there's not too much stuff out there on these kind of things. I mean there is, there definitely is stuff otherwise I wouldn't know about it but um, I just thought I'd like to share it. So we'll hopefully be documenting the uh, the surgery. Mm -hmm. She's looking very much forward to to filming me coming round from the op, which is lovely. Hopefully you'll say some funny things. Yeah, some <laughs> embarrassing <laughs> shit. Yeah, um, um, and just share it all with you guys. Um, and I think the, the important thing a lot with a lot of these are conditions, uh, whatever it is you know. Um, uh, whether it's you know you're losing your hearing I have lost a lot of my hearing on one side and um, I, pr I probably will lose it eventually especially you know the more surgeries I have to have done um, and you know there's a, a lot of side effects with this op and most people that have it end up having numbness and um, loss of taste on the side uh, with the affected ear that they've had surgery on because a lot of facial nerves run through this area um, some people get end up getting their taste, you know, back after a while. Some don't. Um, facial paralysis is another side effect. Um, but you know, for the most part, people, you know, recover from it quite well. Um, but uh, most people do end up having several surgeries for this uh, because um, it's it's so easy for the cholestatoma to grow back. Uh, it depend, you know, especially if. if yeah i don't know what i'm saying <laughs> but um as i was what was i going on to say i've, I've rambled i don't know um hmm. such an exciting topic i completely forgot what i was saying hmm. Margaret. um but yeah i, I just thought i'd, I'd document this because I'm, I'm gonna document the um the operation the mastoid surgery and and see how that goes um then oh, just the surgery itself Can't we go oh yeah yeah i'm gonna be filming the surgery itself <laughs> i've actually already spoke to my doctor and he said well it's fine what they do is 
give me some movement in my arm, okay, and like part of my brain, like subconsciously, will know to press the record, and I'm just gonna be like the, like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what's gonna happen. Um, no, obviously not the actual operation. Uh, we're gonna document, you know, I'll, I'll talk about it after the op. Um, don't really think I'll be making any videos before the op because I'm gonna be in a state of panic, I'm gonna be, you know, shitting myself in the hospital. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be very nervous, um, you know, I don't, I don't like any type of surgery, so yeah, um, but we're gonna document what happens and, and where we go from there, and I'd like to maybe do some segments in the future just on all these individual ear things, um, at least the, the ones I kind of know about because I suffer from them, I mean, I'm not very knowledgeable but I'd like to just talk about things because it can be so hard because people don't really un understand uh, if it's not something they can hear themselves it's kind of hard to explain to someone you know the severity of, of the noise that you can hear because sometimes it can be so intense and you, you can't quite convey that through to someone um, but uh, it all it definitely helps you know if, if you're suffering from any type of type of ear condition you know you need someone to talk to I think I think that's very important because you can end up feeling very lonely um, it obviously depending on your thing but some people cope fine with certain things like when I first got my tinnitus which is the high pitch noise it felt like end of the, the world kind of thing for me but now because I have so much other noises that are louder than that that's kind of not a problem for me anymore I'm not saying it's not a problem it certainly is and it's not a nice thing to suffer from you know, but, um, you know, it, it's all in the individual, but I definitely think it helps to talk to someone for, for anything, nothing to even do with ears, uh, any kind of mental agony you go through with anything, whether it's grieving, whatever, definitely talk to someone. You need someone, you need a little shoulder to cry on, don't you? To get all your little flannel, <laughs> and all, you know, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, but, um, you know, like Natasha, she's she's been there through me for everything, and and it's great. She doesn't really have any ear conditions herself, but she understands. You know, it shouldn't obviously she not understand. She can't hear it, but she understands what I'm going through. You know, um. So if she sees me act in a certain way or like panicking, she'll know exactly what ear condition has been triggered. And I think it's great uh, with any mental. I don't know. What, I don't want to say illness. You know, what I mean, with anything to just talk to someone, it helps. Um. I mean they might not understand what you're going through but they can certainly be there for you and try and help you through it as much as you can um i've rambled enough i didn't mean to do that but um so hopefully we're gonna document you know the mastoid surgery see how it goes and any follow-ups because there'll probably be follow-up surgeries to maybe try and correct hearing or save some of my hearing or whatever if it starts to grow back again whatever um, but anything to do with the, the ears or whatever, I think I'm going to try and document because I'd like to talk about it more. As you can tell, I ramble a lot. So, yeah, um, I don't really have much else to say. Do you have anything to say about the whole thing? No, just hopefully it'll go well. Hopefully it will go well. Do you have anything to say to anyone who, who may have ear conditions watching this? But there's a light Hello! The can camera. you hear me? <laughs> but no, it's not a joke. Um... <laughs> Uh, no, I, I do, I think, you know, ear problems, a lot of people, I don't think realise how how much they can affect you. And you don't, it's like that thing, you know, they say you don't realise what you've got until it's gone, and I think that's very true. Um, you know, I didn't used to appreciate my hearing. Um, I don't just, so bad. yeah, I don't just mean in terms of, like, hearing loss, which I do have hearing loss. I mean, just generally, like, just not hearing all these horrible loud noises, you know, being quite normal, as it were. You don't appreciate what you've got until it's gone. Um, so in that way, it's been quite a blessing, quite an eye opener. But yeah, if anyone's got any ear conditions, if they want to talk about them, whatever, feel free to comment. Um, I probably, uh, you know, won't be able to understand what you're going through because everyone individually different. But it's certainly, I think, nice to know you're not a hundred percent alone out there. You know, there's forums as well. If, um, uh, there's one called Tinnitus Talk. Um, I haven't been on there much, but it seems like a great forum where you see everyone converse from all different kinds of ear conditions, and there's many Facebook pages for all different sorts of things, so, um, yeah, if you have any ear conditions, 
talk to someone, you talk to me, talk to me. I'm all ears. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, that's it. I'm, I'm, I hope you look forward to future videos if you want to see any about certain air conditions. I'm not, obviously I'm not knowledgeable, I'm not a doctor, but I just like to chat about things. I, I might have some information wrong, but it's always good to learn. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Thank you for watching. And I bid you... No, it's not night. Good... Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Goodbye. I ramble too much.